This lesson is about recessions, fiscal policy, and monetary policy. These topics correspond to parts of Lessons 24 and 26, and all of Lesson 27, as listed in your Econ 201 syllabus. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how fiscal policy affects GDP, list the fiscal policy automatic stabilizers, explain how monetary policy affects GDP, list the monetary policy tools, and describe how they are used to expand or contract the money supply. Lastly, given an economic scenario, you should be able to identify an appropriate fiscal or monetary policy response. To learn more about these topics, I recommend that you read your Blackboard lesson notes on recessions and depressions, fiscal policy, and monetary policy. These notes are on pages 55 to 56, 51 to 52, and 49 to 50, respectively, of the Blackboard Lesson Notes PDF file. I also recommend that you read chapters 28 and 30 of your online textbook. There are also some recent articles from the New York Times and Wall Street Journal posted on Blackboard that you can read for more information about current fiscal and monetary policy efforts to combat the economic effects of the coronavirus outbreak. Okay, what is a recession? Well, if you look at the headlines for the past week or so, this is a recession. Technically, a recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of declining gross domestic product. If a recession is deep enough and long enough, we call it a depression. The last recession in the United States began with the 2008 financial crisis. It is likely that we are in a recession now, although it may not show up in the GDP data for some time. As business activity slows during recessions, unemployment rises. As businesses close in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, we can expect to see unemployment rise. So what can we do? Governments have a set of policy tools that they can use to help mitigate the negative effects of a recession. There are two types of policies, fiscal policy and monetary policy. Fiscal policies are voted on by Congress and signed by the President. They include various types of government spending and tax cuts. Monetary policies are implemented by the Federal Reserve. They include increasing the money supply, lowering interest rates, and lowering reserve requirements on banks. The Fed has actually implemented all three of these types of policies in just the past week. Some types of fiscal policies kick in automatically during a recession. For this reason, these policies are called automatic stabilizers. Automatic stabilizers are policies like spending on unemployment insurance and welfare benefits like food stamps. As more people are put out of work during a recession, spending on unemployment insurance and welfare benefits automatically increases as people become eligible for these programs. This increased spending helps provide some amount of income for these people and prevents GDP from declining further by giving people who are affected by a recession the income they need to pay for their basic needs. Taxes can also act as an automatic stabilizer. As incomes fall, the amount that people owe in taxes also falls, and in some cases, people may become eligible for tax credits. In the wake of the coronavirus, Congress is acting to strengthen these automatic stabilizers in an effort to mitigate the effects of the recession. There are two types of fiscal policy, expansionary and contractionary. Expansionary fiscal policies tend to cause GDP to increase, while contractionary fiscal policies do the opposite. In a recession, Congress will use expansionary fiscal policies. Over the past week, Congress and the White House have been working on a number of fiscal policies to address the economic effects of the coronavirus outbreak. There are several articles posted on Blackboard describing these policies. I encourage you to read them. 
This is a list of the fiscal policies that are working their way through Congress. These policies basically have two goals. First, to ensure that the country is able to appropriately respond to people who require testing and care for the virus. Second is to help those people and businesses who are most affected by social distancing policies that have been put in place. Generally, these are small businesses and hourly workers in the service industry who may not have paid sick leave and who cannot work from home if their employer shuts down. Cash payments have been used before in recessions, and they are the easiest and fastest way to provide income support to those whose ability to earn an income has been negatively impacted by the virus. Fiscal policies are only one half of the solution. The other half is monetary policy. Just as there are two types of fiscal policies, there are also two types of monetary policies, expansionary and contractionary. Expansionary monetary policies will increase GDP, and contractionary monetary policies will do the opposite. In a recession, the Federal Reserve will use expansionary monetary policy. The basic idea behind expansionary monetary policy is that we want to keep the gears of the economy moving by encouraging banks to continue to lend to consumers and businesses. This is particularly important in a recession like this one. It is likely that if some businesses have to close for a while, they may be late on their payments. We want to make sure that banks have enough cash to continue operating and that they are able to use that cash to support these businesses. There are three ways that the Federal Reserve can do this. By increasing the money supply directly, by lowering interest rates, and by lowering the reserve requirement. In thinking about how these tools of monetary policy work, Remember that banks do not like to have cash sitting around in their vault doing nothing. They would much rather earn interest on it. Increasing the money supply is by far the fastest and easiest tool that the Fed has at its disposal. For this reason, it is also the tool that the Fed uses most often. In order to understand how the Fed does this, you need to know that banks do not hold all of their reserves on their premises. They hold some of their reserves on deposit at the Fed. These deposits are usually in the form of U.S. government bonds. If the Fed wants to increase the money supply, all it has to do is buy bonds from the banks and pay the banks with cash. As a result of this transaction, banks will have an incentive to lend out the extra cash that they now have in their reserves. And voila, the money supply will be larger Note that the Federal Reserve has already done this. This headline is from last week, but it is doing more. The second thing that the Fed can do in a recession is lower the interest rates that banks pay to borrow cash if their reserves fall below the minimum required. Doing this incentivizes banks to lend because it is cheaper for them to borrow reserves if they need to. The Fed has already done this as well. Note also in this story that the Fed has started buying assets other than government bonds from banks in an effort to give them even more cash to lend out. The last time the Fed did this was during the Great Recession in 2008. However, these actions by the Fed may not be enough. Here's why. Normally, banks do not like to hold a lot of extra cash. However, these are not normal times. Everyone, including banks, is scrambling for safety, which means that they want cash. In order to encourage banks to lend out their cash rather than hoard it in their reserves, the Fed may need to take some extraordinary measures, which means that they need to use the monetary policy tool that they hardly ever use. The last expansionary monetary policy tool that the Federal Reserve can use is cutting the required reserve ratio. If the reserve ratio falls, banks have more money at their disposal to lend. Recently, the Fed announced that it is cutting its reserve requirement to zero. The goal is to ensure that there is enough cash to keep the economy moving. There are likely to be more fiscal and monetary policy responses to the coronavirus in the coming days. The main goal of these responses is going to be to try to protect businesses and individuals from the economic fallout of the virus. My advice to you is read the news. Some of the articles whose headlines I have put in this slideshow are available to you on Blackboard. 
You should also be able to access the New York Times and Wall Street Journal accounts that you have through the library from home. All you will need is your login information. As you read, keep the ideas discussed in this video in mind. After you read all of this depressing news, read, watch, or do something fun. If you want to laugh, follow the link to the video on the next page.